A bump in the night, the clanking of chains across foggy moors, solemn moans can be heard coming from the dark. You know these signs. Geists. Living on Innistrad, you are no stranger to the dead who still haunt the living, but that doesn't make the notion of encountering one any more pleasant. Why had the ghost returned? You only find out when a striking ethereal blade cuts through your chest. It was vengeance. Greetings everyone and welcome to the Aetherob, I'm Sybin bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. In this video, we're continuing our journey through the macabre and dark places of MTG's story. This is 13 Nights of Magic. Hello again my little hellions and welcome back to 13 Nights of Magic where we celebrate the darker side of the Magic the Gathering story with some of the most creepy creatures and lingering legendaries found in the game. And in this video, let's examine a truly ghastly commander from Innistrad, a spirit that fights with the soul of a soldier, Millicent Restless Revenant. Geists, ghosts, spirits. The returned dead without a body, mists given a face and purpose, they go by many names throughout the multiverse. Some are angry, others sad, some vengeful, and others content. The temperament of a ghost truly varies based on the person that ghost used to be, and of course the reason for their returning. Many on Innistrad though come back for one singular purpose, vengeance. Most of the people of Innistrad pass on from this world and are granted the blessed sleep the Church of Avacyn's idea of eternal rest. However, if a human is claimed by death before something important is settled in their life, or if their life was taken unjustly, their spirits are so strong that they remain tethered to the plane and continue on in the mortal realm as a specter. Such was the fate of Millicent. In life, Millicent led an honorable existence. She worked dutifully for those who relied on her, eventually becoming the mayor of a small village in the Stesnia region. Millicent's leadership was one without measure, as she not only led the common folk, but was also captain of the township's guards. She did all she could to secure her people from the dark forces that skulked just outside their makeshift walls. Every night was a struggle, but Millicent got everyone through even the darkest nights. She was driven by her own experiences with the horrors of the night. Living in Stesnia is dangerous, and Millicent lost every person in her family over the years to the likes of vampires, scabs, and demons. From terrible beginnings, she was committed to building a place that could protect people, and she would be the one to stand between them and harm. Word of her prosperous community spread, and soon, her small village grew into a respectable town. With more people, you'd expect more security, but it only drew in bigger threats. And as good as Millicent was, she wasn't unstoppable. Eventually, Innistrad would bring a darkness that she just couldn't fight off. And it came not from werewolves or zombies, but from within. In secret, a shy, nervous man was conducting experiments from within her township, never quite drawing attention to his activities. He was a necro-alchemist, a scientist who pushed the boundaries of the natural order, manipulating life, death, and undeath. His name was Cyril Rav, and right now he was interested in the potent power found in the fragments of soul energy found in Geists. He was constructing what's known as a Geist Bomb, a weapon that used the energy of the dead to fuel a massive explosion. It's a morally pugnant device, using the dead to ignite a population to make even more dead, which in truth was the Necro Alchemist's aims. Without warning, the Geist Bomb would explode and completely level the bustling town. In an instant of pale blue light, everyone was lost. For months, the rubble stood as a reminder of what once was, but the ruins didn't stay quiet for long. Slowly, wisps began to form at night, dancing around what used to be houses and places of gathering. The former citizens were emerging as geists, angered by the events which caused their demise. Still leading them was the now vengeful spirit of Millicent. As a ghost, she still saw herself as a leader, but now was blinded by her people's most hideous desires. They cried out in a single voice, although they all asked for different things, they all demanded vengeance. Not just for the lives they've lost, but for any person or persons who had wronged them over the years. The mob of geists marched on the world of Innistrad, sweeping over it like a storm cloud, raining down despair and death for those responsible for so much of the ghosts' anger. 
when the pale blue cloud descended and filled the streets of a town, there were always left bodies once it departed. Though, upon further inspection, these weren't just random killings by the ghosts. Those killed were always found to be corrupt nobility, lowly cut purses, and werewolves in disguise. When one of the ghosts had sated their vengeance, they would then ascend to the blessed sleep, fulfilled in their purpose. Now Millicent looked to take her own vengeance. She wanted justice for what she had lost, a place she believed people could be safe. She had failed them, but at least she could bring the one responsible, this necro-alchemist, to account for his deeds. Though the man was too claimed in the explosion, that didn't mean he was punished. As a necro-alchemist, he had already prepared himself for death and granted his soul abilities to possess other humans, essentially allowing him to live forever in the flesh of others. Millicent swore to track down this geist and flay him from the mortal world. Rav, the ghostly necro-alchemist, was busy with his own afterlife. He would possess numerous influential people, slowly growing his esteem throughout Stesnia and hoarding more riches for his final poor possession, a lord named Nelik. Rav, in the body of Nelik, knew about the roving spirits seeking their vengeance, and hired a couple paranormal investigators, Eloise Wicker and Jacob Hawken, to deal with the bothersome ghosts. Though, through their investigation, they uncovered the misused Geist Bomb, the destroyed town, and the soul of the necro-alchemist that had originally hired them. Eloise was not so keen on helping this maddened spirit, but Hawken was convinced to join the side of this deceased. Their union cost the lives of many innocent people, as the evil pair made their escape from the city, disappearing with a vast wealth into the countryside. Now, Millicent has teamed up with the sleuth Eloise in order to track down this betraying partner and his ghostly accomplice, so that they could both get their vengeance. And there you go, my little panicking planeswalkers, another night of spooky stories as we go through the 13 nights of magic. Please let me know how you're enjoying the frightening content in the comment section below. If you can, please support our haunting work by leaving this video a like, sharing it with friends, and becoming a subscriber. It's the very best way to help us spread more grief across the multiverse. And until next foreboding evening, friends, see ya!